Hi, my name is Courtney. I am a Salesforce Solution Architect with Proficient, and today I'd like to show off some cool features of the new Caveo Express free version Lightning component. First, a disclaimer, I am not affiliated with Caveo or sponsored by them in any way. A little bit about this free version, it's a Lightning component to use in your customer community. If you have a template, you can drag and drop it in, and the goal is to provide a better, more customizable search results lightning component. Um, there are other options with the paid versions um, that let you do some really cool stuff, uh, but for today I'm going over the free version. So first, um, I want to say this video is not intended to show you the installation process. This is a demo, quick demo of the product, um, but if you want to go through the installation process, let me show you, you would go to express.caveo.com and then you'd fill out your information here to get access to the product. They'll send you an email with a link that you can download it as if you're downloading any app exchange component. Um, then finally walk through this guide, getting started with Caveo for Salesforce Express. There's also a link to it from this page down here. So you'll walk through that guide um, and it really walks you through step by step. It's a great guide. Um, one issue that I ran into when I was installing was I had multiple instances of Salesforce open in my same Chrome instance. So make sure that you are only logged into one Salesforce org when you are installing the product. So let's move on. First, I want to show you the standard lightning component for search results for comparison. So I'm going to open up my community and I want to search testing and you're probably familiar with it but here is the standard Salesforce search component it um, you know has my all discussions articles contacts I have these tabs at the top I can you know kind of filter through my dis filter through my different objects and search results notice I guess one thing I want to point out on all is that it shows me you know all different objects but it does segment them into their own objects so it shows discussions separate from articles um, and also there's no real way of customizing this without um, digging into some custom code uh, basically you're limited to I clicked builder and I'm back on the component you're limited to adding tabs so I can add a new cases tab for example in my properties in my properties box over here so that's the standard component. Um, what I want to do now is show you the Caveo search component, the moment you've all been waiting for. Let me first remove the standard, standard search results. You don't have to remove it, but just for clarity's sake. I'm going to click Components and scroll down. And since I installed it, I will see this custom component search. I'm going to drag this in here and drop it. I do want to say I already have configured the layout so um, when you very first log in and install this app you're gonna to have to like go through a process to get this to show up um, so I've already done that step but what we're going to step into is a little bit more customization once you have that initial initial search result component set up so first let's talk about how it looks a little bit different um, in some really great ways. First of all, it's a seamless search. Notice I see a case here with the case icon. I see um, this is a feed item or a discussion and a knowledge article and they're all just you know in here mixed together and I they're sorted by relevance rather than being segmented by different products. I can also sort them by date um, with those little sort filters at the top. Another cool feature that you'll notice is on the side there are these uh, filtering widgets. So I have object type, account name, owner, and I can click in and check these boxes. I'm still in builder view, but if I were to go to preview view, I could say, hey, I only want to see cases, you know, and it'll on the fly filter those. Or, hey, I only want to see things related to the universal mattresses account, and it'll show me only those cases. So it's just really really nice there's nothing like this standard um, and then finally similar to similar to the standard we do have customizable tabs at the top so it, it, it retains some of that same look and feel so that it fits into the community with these tabs um, but again you can add these tabs you can change the 
labels on these tabs and things like that. So first, to get into this, to update it, I guess normally with standard components, we would come into this builder side, we'd click on it, and we'd edit these properties in the pop-up box. Now there are a few properties here for Caveo um, that you know you can dig into and check or uncheck, but it has sort of a different way of going in and customizing this. So to customize this, I actually, rather than being in the builder part of it, I click preview while well, I'm still technically in the builder. I click preview and then I scroll down and I click on this arrow at the bottom. And this allows me to click an edit button that brings me into a whole different area. Now, when this loads, I'm going to kind of walk through some different components on here. So you'll see the same search that we saw before, but you'll notice as I hover over things, um, I have some options to either delete or edit. Um, and you'll notice that that's true for pretty much everything on the page. Now, first, we can edit these tabs at the top. So I can add a new tab. Let's say let's add a new tab and it'll have a list of all these different Salesforce objects that I can add here. And so, I, for example, I could click in and add document. Add a new tab for document. Additionally, I can go and I'm actually going to delete that document by clicking the trash can. Additionally, say for discussions, for example, say in my community, I prefer to call them questions, then I can click my edit and just change the caption to questions. Click save. So really everything here is very customizable. Um, next I want to talk about these filters on the side. So these are called facet filters and we can edit a lot of properties there. Um, you can drag and drop more facet filters from this right hand side where it says facet. I'm hovering over it now. I can drag that and drop it in here. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but I do want to point out this facet range and facet slider are not available for the free version. Uh, but we can also drag in additional sort terms, which is this relevant state. I could drag in an additional sort there. And I can then drag in a new tab rather than clicking that add a new tab button. So with these filters here, these facet filters, what we can do is we can actually customize how how things are sorted. Right now it's sorted by occurrences by the, you know, so right now feed items, there's a lot more feed items and opportunities more opportunities and contacts, et cetera. So that's what, where it's coming up with the order for these actual, actual sort check boxes. But I could also sort it by a kind of relevancy score and I could sort it by label instead. So this would sort this alphabetically in here. But then to get a little more granular, what I can do is click on this edit button and you'll notice there's just a ton of settings here. So this main page um, is identification. I can edit, right now it's label or caption is object type. I can change that to something else that's more user friendly. Um, I can change the number of values. So by default, there are five check boxes showing up there. I can increase that or decrease that. Um, really help you know cut down on complexity for my users or if I want them to see a lot of options, I can increase that. Of course, if, if I have it up at eight, but there's only five objects that are returned in the results, it would only show the five. So next, what I think is especially um, nice is, so again, I'm going to kind of skip through some of these, but you can always click through and there's a lot of this hover help text that can be helpful as you're working through that. But I'm going to click on this last one, tabs. I do want to save. Okay, so for tabs, right now I'm on object type, right? And what it's saying is this particular facet filter is appearing in every single one of my tabs, meaning all contact, questions, articles, cases, etc. And in this situation, I don't really want that. Really, object type only makes sense for all content. So what I'm going to do is say, I don't need to know the object type on questions, articles, cases, etc. because when I click on that, it will only be cases. And I'll click Save. So this is a nice way to um, you know, customize which filters appear for which tabs. Another example of that would be this account name. I'm going to click Edit and edit the tabs here. 
right now it says all tabs. Account name really only makes sense for my cases, my accounts, and my contacts. And I'll click save. So it won't even show up on all content anymore. All right, so next I want to move on to our sort filters, which I mentioned before. We have relevance and date here. We can, again, like I said, you can drag and drop a new one. We can also edit and we can change the caption. So this is relevance right now. We might want to say like uh, something else, like um, frequency or something like that. And we could click save. Again, this one also has the option to use only in specific tabs. So I can go through and say, oh, I only want relevancy to be a sort option for, you know, like all content. In this situation, I think it does make sense to leave it at all tabs. So I'll put that back. Okay, next I want to walk through um, our final portion, and that is these object results themselves. So you'll see here, like I have an opportunity, I have a contact, a case. We can go in and edit how this layout looks for each object. So I'm going to click into opportunity first and click this edit. And this will tell me, oh, hey, this is for Salesforce opportunity and any conditions. So there's a lot of places where you may see this conditions. We can add additional filter criteria and things like that. I'm going to click layout. So this layout, um, it's really neat. Right now it's a little bit um, maybe lacking some user friendliness in terms of it doesn't say the field name. It, it says like an at SF and then the developer name. So you'll see, you know, at SF owner name, at SF at account name. So um, so not, not necessarily the most user friendly, but it's really, really great in terms of the functionality. So on this page, we have an icon, we have, and that's this icon down there. We have the result link, which is this link at the top. Um, so you'll see this, this down here mirrors what I'm doing up here on the layout. So right now, let's say, let's see, I have owner, account, amount, and expected revenue. But for opportunities, I also want to see the stage in the search results. So what I'm going to do is drag on, and on this right-hand side, these are all of our options to drag and drop into this layout. I'm going to drag field value onto here. And what field? I'm going to type at Salesforce stage. And there it is, Salesforce stage name. It can be a little tricky navigating those sometimes, but give it a chance and you'll find it. Okay, so then see, I have field value, Salesforce stage name, and I have some options for this field value. Um, specifically, I definitely want to fill out this field value text caption. I'm going to say this is stage. And I'm going to click save. And now when I'm looking at this, I see owner account amount expected revenue and here's my stage. I'm going to go back in. I want to show you one other trick or issue you might run into. Let's say I wanted to move this stage to be up here by the owner. Let's click save. Okay, and it's not doing it now. Um, so let me show you. You may run into when you add a new field, you may run into it looking something like, let me push it over here. Here we go. This is what I was uh, what I was thinking of. So when I put that stage here, notice this perception analysis runs directly into the amount right there. It doesn't have that nice spacing that the other fields do. Now to edit this, you'll have to click on this code. Yes, I want to save. And in the code, and this is what's also really neat about Coveo is this access to all this code. We can do styling right in here for each piece. So when I'm looking at this, I see my account name, my stage name, amount, expected revenue. You'll notice for all the other fields besides stage name, there's a style in there for margin right 30 pixels. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste that into my stage and click save. And that'll give me my spacing so that it, you know, stage doesn't run into amount. 
One other thing I'd like to review before we wrap up this demo is editing another object result, and that's specifically the chatter questions, discussions, whatever you like to call it, um, editing that component. So I'm going to click questions and a sort by date to show you something here. So you'll notice this first option here, type question post, it says where can I learn more about ABC, ABC is really important to me, thanks. Notice it has this paragraph tag around the body of, of the question of the post. So by default, Caveo does not, you know, fix that and say, oh, hey, this is HTML, but we can do that. So I'm going to click Edit. I'm going to go to Layout. I'm going to click on that Salesforce body and click Edit. I notice on this right-hand side, there's this HTML and code value. I'm going to click Check on that and click Save. And we'll go back to questions, sort by date, and you'll see that same post. Now it doesn't have the paragraph tags in there. So that's how we can incorporate our rich text and make sure the results are very user friendly. Another recommendation that I'd make is clicking into here, click edit layout, is I don't feel like this wrench chatter icon is very helpful to our users. What we can do instead is drag in this chatter thumbnail drag that there and then remove the icon and so that way we have a more user-friendly um, piece there it's a hold on cancel it's um I do want to escape that save it's a user user icon rather than a wrench and notice it'll actually put my own chatter icon in there, my profile picture. So then when users are searching, they see the picture of the person who posted the discussion. All right, very quickly, I do want to show for any page in here, we do have a UI view and a code view. So I can always go and click into this code view and see what's, you know, what's displaying on the back behind the scenes and in this code view I can customize styling and things like that to match my look and feel that I'm going for. I'm going to click save all right so in summary I think the the greatest features of this search are the seamless search, the filtering capabilities, and really the overall customizability, both the UI and, you know, I can dig into specifically the content UI of the results. I can have the filtering. Um, it's just a really great free tool to use as you are building out your community. Thank you for your time.